In the beginning, before there was religion, there was faith and worship. People had faith in God, and they worshipped him. Jesus had not arrived yet. So those that believed in God had faith in God and worshipped God. The other side, the evil side, they worshipped many gods, many pagan gods, many pagan rituals. They practiced pagan witchcraft, human sacrifice. This is a depiction of Constantine. It is he who put together the new and improved version of what we call Catholicism. If you could call Catholicism before Constantine worship of God, faith in God, and that is what I would say would be the earliest form of Catholicism, is just your faith in him and your worship of him. There is one God, one faith, one worship. Only in modern times is civilization advanced. Did people disagree and split off and create other forms of faith and worship, which we call religion. Back to this man, Constantine. He was himself a pagan. He worshipped many gods. It is said that he had a vision. And through this vision, He changed over and became a Christian. But by different accounts that I have read, it was quite some time before he actually became a Christian. And I have actually read accounts that it was only prior to his death that he actually became one. So even after the creation of the religion of Catholicism. Apparently, he still remained a pagan for a long time. So, it's my contention and other contentions by different people that what he did is he brought over different aspects of Babylonian paganism and such, and incorporated those into the early form of Catholicism, which is um, passed down or migrated through history to our modern day. And you can see different elements of it. We look at the Pope, we'll use him as an example. When he wears the mitre upon his head, we have to say it's not just fancy clothes and, and garb that they wear, ceremonial. We have to say who invented it who designed it. Where did you get it from? And you can see through this depiction of Nimrod that there was, like I say, many different 
pagan gods worshipped. But fish gods was another entity of worship. Dagon is who I can think of right off. But as you can see in these depictions here, you see what he's wearing. Obviously, the, the fish's mouth. And as the mouth is open, you get the V shape. So, if we say that these Babylonian pagan practices were being done thousands of years before Christ arrived on the scene, well before Constantine, And in our modern times, we see this. Of course, it's not the, the full body skin or anything of a fish draped down the back of it. But we have to say that there is a similarity in it. And we have to say where did you get it? Why is it so similar to the pagans of the ancient times? Why, if you were going to design a headdress to be worn in ceremonies, why does it look so much like something so ancient? And you can even go back to this story here, as far as a holiday goes. You can go back to Semiramis and Nimrod. She, in ancient lore, pagan lore, is called the Queen of Heaven. Yep. You have to you have to find this out. You have to understand how paganism worked and how it has drifted down throughout time and been blended in. That is not to say <clears throat> that it is true that she is a queen of heaven. Obviously she's not. But in their lore these titles were given unto them. And it is this one, Semiramis, who some call Ishtar. This one is where your Easter comes from. Easter, Ishtar, Easter. The Easter egg has nothing to do with anything. Absolutely zero. And then you can see crazy things like this. You know, why sun worship was also a pagan practice. So why would you have such a blazing sun? I mean, you know, this crucifix would seemingly represent Christendom. So why would you put in something that is so pagan in with this? That is not the Son of God, S-O-N. That is a representation of a blazing sun. And then you can also see uh, it kind of sort of looks like a sun. And then the rendition of Apollo. So we see all these pagan renditions.
And we have to think. We have to think about faith and worship versus religion. Because faith is something that you can always have. You just have to take a hold of it. And loving your your creator, loving God, loving Jesus, that's within you to do. You don't have to join anything to do that. Man created religion. But faith and worship were always there. And this guy, he's the one that created one of the largest religions in our world today. Catholicism. The two biggest ones are what? Catholicism and uh, Islam. So the credit for Catholicism, as you know it, goes to him. But he took pagan rituals, pagan styles, pagan beliefs, and he blended them in. The average person doesn't know this because they trust their ministers, they trust their priests. It's not supposed to be that way. So they never normally ask any questions. They never normally doubt and wonder. But you have to ask or you'll never know. You can never find out if you don't ask the questions. And you can never understand if you never find out. He wanted to satisfy the pagans and the potential Christians. He wanted to bring them all together. It was essentially the first one, hopefully what he would hope would be the world religion. See, there's that word again, the world religion. Not just faith and worship, but congregations with the first actual big time leaders and such not. So in order to bring pagans into this, he had to keep part of their beliefs. Part of the things that they could see, such as the mitres and different things like that in the ceremonies. That way it attracted them into that. So, I just wanted to provoke your thought. Not to shake your foundation of your faith. Only to strengthen it. But you must understand some things aren't always as they seem. God shines through in everything. If, if you look, He'll give you the truth. And He'll strengthen your faith for your belief and your worship of Him. God bless everyone.